Hello, I'm Matt, and I'm just some guy on the internet. Today we're going to talk about writing descriptive scenes. What are they? How to do it? Who am I? In this video, we're going to be going over my methods for writing vivid, descriptive scenes for locations and areas. Now, this is primarily focused at writing for, uh, for example, tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and that kind of thing. But these same principles can be applied to any kind of writing that you want to do. Uh, that's what makes them principles and not specific examples. Let's get into it. Before you start writing anything, you need to ask yourself the most important question. What, what is, is the, the purpose, purpose of the writing? writing? Now, this is pretty obvious. It's a very straightforward, obvious question, but it's important to understand because the purpose of your writing, the goal that you have in mind when you start writing, is what will guide you through this process and help you to make your writing concise and punchy rather than long-winded and some other descriptor that goes along with long-winded. It may feel counterintuitive to those of you who like to write flying by the seat of your pants. Uh, I happen to be that way a good amount of the time, but these methods will really help you to condense down your writing process so that way you're not having to go back and edit out so much stuff. Uh, or if you don't like editing, you can save yourself the hassle of having to do that in the first place. Even just having a general idea of what you want to write will help to speed up your writing process a great deal. Now the purpose for a scene or any piece of writing can be very simple, just conveying the information of a physical location. You need to describe the room that the players or characters are in. You need to describe the area that they're walking across. That's perfectly fine. That's a, a totally fine and reasonable goal to have for your piece of writing. Your goals can also be a lot more elaborate. As long as you know the goal before you start writing, you're good to start writing. Keeping that goal at the front of your mind while you write will help you to stay on track while you're writing and not get deviated or distracted by any of these off tangents that writers like to go on. Once you know your goal, you can then get into the actual writing of the scene. Every writer ever has their own voice. It's one of the hard things about becoming a writer is discovering your own voice. If you don't have one yet, keep writing, you will find it or it will find you more likely. I'm not going to talk about the specific techniques or the specific phrases or words that I find to be effective because those are going to be different for each and every person. Instead, I'm going to show you the ways that I think about scenes and the things that help me get through writing them. For me, as I write a scene, I like to really place myself there. What do I feel in the air? Is it humid? Is the air thick with a certain scent? As I run my hands along the imaginary scene's walls, what does the texture of the wall feel like? What things catch my eye throughout the scene? What things do I notice that I may want to take note of? What feels out of place and what feels normal in this scene? Remember, your audience doesn't know anything that you don't tell them as the author. If you're talking about a Dungeons and Dragons game, for example, your players don't know what's in the room that you've imagined unless you tell them what's in the room. You have to provide that information for them. To put this in more concrete terms, I generally try to give at least one line of description for each of the following. The walls, the ceiling, and what is directly in front of the characters. For basic scenes, a description can be something as simple as this. And now don't be offended that I'm not looking at you, I have to read this one. The group pulls open the heavy wooden door and finds the place to be absolutely packed with all sorts of people. About a half dozen servers rush about the L-shaped room, carrying huge trays of drinks and food to different tables, and most people seem to be heartily laughing and talking after a long day of work. The smell of almost sweet, heavy beer and roasting meats fills the tavern space, and they see a number of tables with those same huge trays, covered in steaming loaves of bread piles of roasted vegetables and meat, and scattered about the food are small dishes filled with different seasonings, sauces, and dips. A few musicians in the corner play their instruments, desperately trying to cut through the din of people talking, eating, and relaxing. The sound of their music muffled by the low ceilings and worn wooden floors. Whether or not that description was good, we can debate forever, but it did accomplish the goal of giving the players, in this case my D&D game players, Check us out on Baggage Claim d and I'll link in the description every week. It did give those players a feel for what is in the room, how big the room is, and the types of people that they might interact with within that room. If you're writing a book or a short story, you can use these same kinds of things to frame for the reader how the room feels, what is actually in this space, what would it feel like to be there. This basic description took me less than five minutes to write, and this is really all that's needed for the overwhelming majority of scenes and descriptions in most D&D games 
games and really in most writing in general. You don't need to go on for 10 to 15 pages about a thing because you like writing about it. Well, people aren't going to read that kind of thing very often. Not every interaction has to be life-changing or character-defining. Sometimes you just have to convey information that doesn't drag on and on. And the best way to do that is to hit the floors, the ceiling, the walls, and what's directly in front of the characters. This method will allow you to do this without dragging on and on and allow you to be a little more concise with your writing process. However, not every scene is so simple and basic. Sometimes some of the fun, half the fun in writing is making a really complex scene and putting all the little pieces together that you want to be there that are just exactly in the right place. These types of things really are designed to help your audience to feel like they are there and that nothing can remove them from that. They want to feel totally immersed. And honestly, for the majority of the time, I tend to, for these more complex scenes, I tend to just expand on the basics that I talked about before. You take the floors, the walls, the ceiling, what's directly in front of the characters, and you add on to it. You expand it into something that is a little more descriptive. And maybe you add in a few more details about how the air feels the temperature of the room, those kinds of things. But you're really trying to just drop your characters into that moment. Again, I think of it as if I'm standing in the room and looking around, what things catch my eye? What things cause my gaze to linger? What stands out as notable or interesting that I'd like to examine more closely? These can be anything from sights, smells, textures, even tastes. If you want your audience to feel immersed, you need to provide them with the tools to immerse themselves into the world that you've created. Uh, here's a more complex paragraph example. Again, I have to read this one so I apologize for not looking directly at you. Entering in, you see an elegant tall room splay out before you. Polished floors of obsidian beautifully reflect both sight and sound, and for a brief moment you think you might be seeing double before your eyes adjust and you see the reflected furniture in the floor tiles. Large pillars plated with rich oak wood reach up and support the cleanly tiled ceiling. Numerous bookcases, each filled to the brim with scrolls, ancient tomes and texts, and volumes large and small, rest in several locations across the room, usually flanked by a neatly stacked set of scrolls inside a simple organizer that looks in design like a wine rack. A large, mostly flat sensor breathes sweet, light-smelling smoke that curls and tumbles upwards into the air before filtering around the room, giving the whole area a gentle and comforting feeling. Next to the sensor, a richly carved chair, closer resembling a throne, sits and appears to be made from a single piece of ivory or bone, from what animal you can't imagine. And a longish runner drapes from the back of the chair, down the seat, and nearly to the floor. By the entrance, a twelve-foot-tall globe filled with shining bluish-silver cloudy liquid slowly churns and you feel a gentle hum emanating from it, just out of hearing for most of you. Behind the globe, you see a few sets of cushioned couches, each with a set of smoking tobacco accoutrements in the center on a table, along with a number of assorted pieces of reading material. Crimson banners drape nobly from pillar to pillar, above bookcases, across the ceiling, and all around the room. As you trace them with your eyes, two lead to the far rightmost wall, where you now notice what you thought initially was a massive painting of the Colosseum is, in fact, a huge window that faces the Colosseum. The two banners reach down and wrap around the railing of the short wall before tumbling down an unknown distance out of sight. The sky overhead outside the window is breathtaking. Golden light caresses the bottom edges of the soft cotton-like clouds that hang lazily centered over the arena and you can see the hanging gardens across the open space on the other side of the city in the distance. Again, we can debate the goodness of that description forever, but one thing it did do is convey the feeling of what it's like to be planted down in that room. It gives a very clear feeling of what it's like to be in that room, as well as what kind of person might make use of that space. Using your descriptions to convey more than just the basic information is a little more complex to accomplish, but ultimately the payoff is definitely worth it. Once you've got these basics, down, you can start incorporating other fun elements into your descriptions, like foreshadowing and other things that help your readers to feel a sense of uh, attachment to your writing. In another video, I mentioned using music as a sort of signature for your character, like a TV show or a movie having a theme song. Every time you hear the theme song, you know that that character is going to come out. Every time that you hear that melody happen, you know, ah, this is a moment for this character. Movies and TV do this all the time. You can do this with your writing as well. Once you have your characters nailed down, 
down and figured out, think of a few unique descriptors that you'd like to use for them. Choose a few unique words or phrases that are really good for that specific character, and then only use them when describing things that that character does or that character themselves. This is a way that you can help your audience to get that same feeling of familiarity and closeness that you get with music in your writing. Now, of course, it's very easy to go overboard on this, and that's something you really want to avoid because it will rapidly make your writing feel trite and simplistic. Use this idea sparingly, but use it. Definitely use it and incorporate it and include this technique into describing your characters. The character doesn't need the same descriptors in every single scene that they're in, but used judiciously, this effect can really draw your readers or your audience into a closeness with this character that will help them to relate to this person even more and feel that sense of, I know when they're about to come out before they show up. It'll help them feel like the story is natural and evolving in a normal or ordinary way. This is a kind of powerful tool that will often slip under your reader's conscious eye and help them to feel those things without necessarily noticing that they're feeling those things overtly. And it will still accomplish the goal of making the character feel impactful. One final note I'd like to talk about is length. Brevity is the soul of wit and your writing is no different. As much fun as it may be, no one wants to read 10 pages of description for a single snowflake or hear you go on and on for a page about how cool a door looks. It's fun to write and you should definitely use those as writing exercises to help you stay sharp, keep your descriptor muscles flexed, but you have to figure out what is essential for your piece and what isn't. For most scenes, and this is especially true for tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, one or two paragraphs at most is really all you need. It's it's enough that your players or characters can know what's going on in a scene and not feel lost, but not so much that your characters have forgotten where they've started or your readers are confused about where you actually started the description and what it is you're even talking about by the time they're finished. I can't tell you how many books I've read that at the end of two or three pages of description, I sit back and say, wait a second, where am I? You want to avoid this because if people get confused in your in reading your work or participating in your work, they're not gonna wanna keep doing it. You have to make your writing pack a punch in a very limited space. Learning how to do this takes, unfortunately, a lot of time and a lot of practice. It's something you have to work at to get better. It doesn't just show up one day. You can't just say, oh, eventually I'll be good at this if I don't ever work on it. You have to work on it and you have to try and try and try and then you'll get better. One day you'll look back and say, oh, I haven't always been this good. That's so strange. But believe me, it takes work and the payoff is worth it. Fundamentally, what it comes down to is understanding what your goal is with your writing. If you don't know what you want to accomplish with the piece of writing, you're going to just be meandering about waxing poetic about these different things without actually getting to the point. Whereas contrarily, alternatively, in other words, another way to say this is if you just know what you want to do and you stick to it, you can drive straight there. I mean, it's a difference between taking a straight path to get somewhere or zigzagging all over the place and driving all over creation to try to find your way there. The straight line is always faster, but it really comes down to understanding the purpose of your writing. Boom! See that? That's called foreshadowing. It's almost like I knew what I was doing when I started this project. Yeah, that's right. You got, I guess, internet schooled? I don't know. Anyway, once you know your goal, you can cut away everything that doesn't support that goal and you'll end up with a really nice punchy piece of writing that people will want to read and they'll feel involved in reading it. It is the key to making your writing more concise and more readable and really just better in general. It doesn't mean there's no place for you to go on and talk at length about something, but narrowing it down and being concise with your writing will make your writing feel so much more alive. But that's enough of that for this video. In another video, maybe in the future, I'll talk about that some more and how ways to do that both in creative writing and in academic writing, because that's kind of what I really like to do also is academic writing. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Scenes don't have to be boring and they certainly aren't impossible to accomplish. Stick to the basics of what you see, feel, and hear. And this will enliven the scene for your characters or your audience. Make sure to practice. Almost everyone sucks at almost everything that they try when they start. The only way to get better is to keep sucking at it and developing those skills and eventually you'll get better. And then you'll be able to tell people it's not so bad, you just have to practice. Anyway, I think that's enough for this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one.